Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call tonight's meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. The first item on our agenda tonight is the superintendent's report. Superintendent Cook. Thank you, President Paul Varento. I have a few items this evening. First and foremost, uh, I'd like to congratulate all those involved with uh, a successful high school graduation. Uh, Principal Butcher, Amy Barcy, Nick Eaton, Pat Hepfer, Joe Dutcher, and all the high school staff, and all of our staff who actually came and attended the graduation ceremony. It was a great event. Uh, it's nice to be back again at the Breslin Center, and it was just really a nice event. So thanks to all of uh, who put that together behind the scenes at the, um, at the Breslin Center itself and such. So it was, it was really a great day. Uh, and then secondly, I'm pleased to uh, recommend Emily Weaver for the Hazlitt Middle School um, assistant principal position. She has a BA in Spanish and an MA in K-12 ed administration from Michigan State University. Emily was a world language Spanish teacher uh, for Hazlitt High School for seven years prior to her most recent position as associate principal at Waverly High School. And Emily is actually with us this evening, so I'm going to ask her to come up and just say a couple words. Thank you, Emily. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I have to lower this quite a bit. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I just wanted to introduce myself and thank you for the opportunity to be here. Hazlitt feels like home to me, and I'm really excited to be able to work with what I already know to be an outstanding group of leaders, teachers, and educators. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. <clears throat> So we do have a couple staff resignations. Matthew Jason, high school uh, social studies teacher, effective at the end of the school year. He served the district for one year. Best wishes to Matthew and his future endeavors. Diane Smith, middle school science teacher, effective at the end of the school year. She served the district for one year. Best wishes to Diane. And then Jason Smith, middle school English teacher, effective at the end of the school year. And Jason also has served the district for one year. Best wishes to Jason and his future endeavors. Uh, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Superintendent Cook. Do we have any questions for members? Okay, then we will move to our first discussion item, which is our 2023-24 budget hearing. So Mr. Jensen. Good evening. Uh, so I'm here to present our uh, final 22-23 budget, as well as our 23-24 budget for the next year. Um, this is our required budget hearing. We have to, everybody here knows, we have to uh, uh, come up with a budget for next year by June 30th, and this is our formal hearing uh, for that budget. So as we look at the current year budget, this is the final budget amendment, um, and you'll see a $2.7 million adjustment um, from our March amendment. Uh, this is... Typically, this is usually a smaller adjustment, but uh, there was some uh, GASB uh, standards that, accounting standards that were changed um, for current year that we had to make some adjustments. You'll see that these are, these are adjustments that are both uh, an adjustment to the revenue as well as an adjustment to the expenditure. So they're, they're kind of offsetting, and I'll go through those here in a minute. So as we look at the revenue adjustments for the current year, you'll see the MEPSERS retirement offset of $1.7 million. That was the, when they passed the state budget, uh, they passed, the legislature decided to dump a billion dollars into the retirement system. And this was our portion of that billion dollars that they spread throughout all the school districts. And they had to run it through uh, the school system. So they, they pay us the money and then through our payroll, we process it and pay it back to the state. And that's this current fiscal year. That's for this budget. current yep. fiscal year. And on the next slide, you'll see the expenditure adjustment for that same amount. And then as I, I mentioned, there's the ISD adjustment. There, uh, I had to adjust the revenue as well as the expenditures. You'll see an expenditure adjustment on the next slide. And the subscription-based IT arrangements and the capital leases, those were the standards that um, changed this year that were new this year that we had to make some adjustments we have to record a revenue as well as an expenditure on the books for the entire contract amount and then we make payments 
throughout the years to, to pay those. So you'll see expenditure adjustments for those as well on the next slides. And then here's those, uh, those similar amounts, uh, offsetting amounts for, for the expense adjustments. And that's, that's the final adjustment for the 22-23 current year budget. And just to be clear, so those new, um, those adjustments, so for the IT arrangements for the buses, mm -hmm. it used to be that we spread those out yes, over we years, did. but now because of the accounting standards, we have to we have show to, them in the year when it. Yep, we have to show, show the, ex, the, the entire expense in the current year. And then there's an offsetting revenue amount, amount that kind of offsets, that nets it to zero, and then we, we show the payments throughout the years. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So at the end of this year, this is a look at our fund balance, um, adding the $250,000, about 9.1% at the end of this year. As you see, we continue to gradually increase our fund balance and add about that $250,000. And that difference in the percentage is because of that $1.7 million, correct? Yes. In part. Yes. Uh, that, it's kind of misleading. The percentage gets kind of skewed by that MEPSERS because... We currently, that 1.7 was on top of the 2.5 million that we already put in there, so that kind of brings our percentage down because it inflates the revenues. So as we look to next year, 23-24 budget, as you know, the governor, the House, and the Senate all come out with their separate proposals. And the governor's 258 per pupil, about $1.1 million. The Senate, 550 per pupil, about $1.4 million. Then the house was 366 per pupil, just under a million dollars per pupil. Uh, the governor and Senate didn't have any increases in at-risk funds. The house proposal had a significant increase in at-risk funds. The special ed reimbursement, they each had increases in special ed. Uh, the MEPSERS, the school safety and mental health, they, they all kind of kept those status quo going into next year. And then looking at our enrollment for next year, uh, you'll see that we are proposing or projecting a 30, per, 30 pupil increase in our enrollment. As you know, since the pandemic, we've been declining and we think it's kind of leveled out this last year. Uh, we, um, we think that we're leveled out or bottomed out and that we're gonna see a turn. We, there's a couple developments going on that we think we'll get some students from as well. Our school of choice numbers are, have went up and um, our kindergarten numbers look good too this year. So, and not that we bud balance our budget on school of choice, but we do have an increase in those applications. So we'll see, see where that gets us. So looking at the numbers, you'll see uh, about a $500,000 decrease in revenues and expenditures for this year. And we do have a balanced budget. And as you'll see on the, Another slide that um, I did increase the contingency to about 350,000 for for next year, because as our revenues grow, to keep with that 10 percent, and 10 percent, we we're going to have to increase that number as well. So here's a look at our revenue adjustments uh, foundation, and we did I did for our for next year I did use the governor's numbers um, for per pupil increase 458. Um, and a 30 pupil increase in enrollment, that's about $1.3 million. You'll see that one-time money they dumped into the retirement, we gotta take that out this year. As well as some child care and some 98C learning loss funds that are, were one-time funds, but those are going away now. And just to be clear, that, that doesn't affect any of the, the programming that we have in the child care program. We, can, we did some supplementing of some other funds to be able to use those uh, child care funds. And then you'll see the resource officer that's new this year. Uh, we are adding a res resource officer. This is a match grant, so this is half of what the expense on the next slide you'll see. Hey, Rick. Yes. Um, just to explain, I know you said the money's in and out on MIPSERS, but I don't know if everybody knows what MIPSERS is. Oh, I, mean, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, but the, just... it's the Michigan Public School uh, Employee Retirement System. Thank you. Yes, yep. So then they'll look at our expense adjustments. You'll see our staffing adjustments, about $800,000. That includes all our uh, percentage increases, step increases across the board for all our groups. Uh, you'll see the MEPSERS offset there. Contingency, I increased that 100,000. 
a bus lease, 25,000 increase in utilities and supplies costs have gone up. We did bump up our curriculum a little bit and then you'll see the resource officer uh, expenditure there. Then as we go forward and go through the summer, coming up into next year, we're gonna keep an eye on our state budget because um, they will, uh, they, they'll go into conference and they'll uh, come up with a budget. I hear they're gonna have it by June 30th. Um, don't know, but, um, and then as we get those numbers and get our enrollment in the fall, we'll make adjustments to the budget as needed. And then as you know, I mentioned the enrollment, we have our school of choice meeting tomorrow. Um, so we'll, um, no better what school of choice numbers we'll have for going into next year. <clears throat> then if anybody has any questions. I, I don't have a question, just a, just a comment. I appreciate Rick and, and Steve and Diane, the administration, how you always kind of, you know, this year we're kind of budgeting at the kind of in the middle for the foundation mm -hmm. allowance and, and that way that which whatever happens we don't have too large of a swing either way so i appreciate your your thoughtfulness on on approaching it that way sure thank you yeah for those watching at home who don't know we have to approve our budget by june 30th um, yes. going into the next fiscal year there's no guarantee although we're hopeful that the state will agree on the budget before we approve our budget in two weeks um, there's no guarantee of that so it's always a little scary and I, I will echo Greg I've always appreciated the approach taken by the administrative team to try to figure out what that middle line is that seems fairly likely and, and to go from there so that we don't have drastic adjustments um, in the next year any questions and thank you for the work on the new accounting standards. I know those are federal standards. Yeah. Those are federal standards for yes that we're required to adopt and yeah, and it's a lot of work to change how those are accounted for. So yes. appreciate your work on that as well, Mr. Jensen. So thank you. Not hearing any other questions. Thank you. And I, are you presenting the next? Yes. I, All right. Not done yet. Not done well, yet. Might as, well, might as well move right into. So I am proposing, or I am recommending to the board that we purchase one, or not purchase, uh, do a lease, a five-year lease purchase for a uh, school bus for next year. Um, and I've attached the, our, our uh, bus fleet. We are in pretty good shape. Um, um, you know, 15 of our buses are, are, you know, fairly new that we bought with, you know, just before the bond and with the bond. And then just last year, we leased five, five new buses. So our fleet is pretty good. We have five buses that are, are getting to the point where you know it's costing a lot of money to repair. Um, becomes troublesome to pass inspections and one of them has a blown motor. Um, but I am recommending that uh, we do another lease for one, one bus next year. And uh, this will probably be a recurring theme over the next uh, four years after this one um, to get our bus fleet back up to you know where we really want it. But um, I'm recommending that we uh, do the five year. It's five years. I think it's about twenty-five thousand per year, and then we own the bus at the end of the at the end of that. Oh. I don't know if anybody had any questions. Or Rick, do the new accounting standards affect at all how we have to account for the lease of the buses? Is yeah, this this will yeah this will be we'll have to put the entire amount on the on the books as a revenue and an expenditure. But then when we make the payment, that's the only expense you have to expense for five years. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How long do we keep buses normally? I mean, it's a five-year lease, and then uh, we own it after the five years. It, it, do we have an average life expectancy of a school bus? Um, until a few years ago, they were, until we got, went into the bond and started purchasing new buses, our bus fleet was anywhere from 15 to 20 years old which becomes troublesome when you're trying to pass inspection. It's not necessarily the, the motor and the components, it's because of Michigan winters, they just do a number on, on the bodies. But um, usually if you can get 12 years out of a bus, 12 to 15 years out of a bus, you're, that's pretty good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick, Rick it, it, and if you don't, if you hadn't heard about this, that's, that's fine. I, I thought I had saw, um, in, in the state budget discussions uh, in Lansing, there was talk of providing school districts funding for um, electric buses. Are you aware of that and what 
impact that, I mean, again, obviously the budget hasn't passed, so we don't know whether or not that's even going to be in the final budget. Um, but have you heard about that? And I haven't heard a ton about okay. it. I, I do know that electric buses are very expensive. Yeah. And um, I know there's a lot of upfront costs to get the infrastructure in place, the charging stations and, and uh, the power supplies to, mm -hmm. to operate some of those. I haven't really looked a lot into it. I just, you know, I've talked to some people about, you know, how costly it is to, to even start with that. No, I th thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. No, I was just curious because I, I think I had read an article a few days yeah. ago about that, and so yeah. I didn't know whether yeah, that or not. is out there. Yep, and I know the governor has talked about it. And okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah. No, I appreciate the comment about the infrastructure because I don't yeah. know that the funding is there to support infrastructure development I, for school I, districts. I do the imagine the upfront cost yeah. is, is quite higher than <laughs> yeah. what we're doing right just now. So you, just so you know, an average bus now costs about one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. I believe the electric buses are in upwards of four hundred and fifty thousand Four hundred and fifty to five fifty, <laughs> yeah. Not to mention the additional infrastructure that's needed to support, um, and then the challenges, the charging when you're going on field trips and things uh -huh. like that, where you're going out of town and such. So, um, not to say that we wouldn't consider something right, like sure. that, but it is quite a, mm -hmm. an additional cost for Understood. Uh, I just consideration. Didn't... I just wanted to give people numbers so you had an idea of what that. No, and, and I, I totally appreciate that. I was just inquiring, uh, you know, obviously um, my, my question was, uh, obviously I know that about the upfront cost and installing the chargers and everything like that, but I didn't know um, in terms of the budget what they were going to be providing school districts and whether or not that would be, you know, if they're going to give us $250,000 towards one, you know, and yeah. uh, so that's kind of where I was going with that. But obviously, we're, we're not at that point yet. But I'm yeah. just curious about it. So yep. thank you. Yeah. Rick, is this a new bus? Like yes, brand new? Okay. brand new. Brand new bus, yes. Awesome. Okay. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jensen. Thanks, Rick. The next item is the school resource officer proposed contract. That's me. That's you. So um, we've been talking about this for several months now. We were awarded a grant from the state, as uh, Rick alluded to in the budget, um, three years, um, $200,000 of support over the next three years. We've been working with Meridian Township over the last several months to put together an agreement. Our attorneys uh, put together a draft agreement. They shared it with their attorneys. We've gone back and forth, and we came up with a final agreement um, of where that looks like. So um, I just wanted to give the board uh, the opportunity to ask any questions. So as people know, um, this is an agreement with Meridian Township Police. Um, the officer, we actually know it, it's going to be Colby Cassidy, um, who is our current resource officer. He's put in and agreed uh, to, to do that position, so that's a positive for us because we don't have anybody new. Um, they will be an employee of Meridian Township, so all of the wages and everything associated with that contract will be paid by Meridian Township, and we will reimburse them for those costs. Um, so the contract basically spells out all of the um, obligations between the township and the school district. Um, it doesn't talk a ton about a actual what that individual is going to be doing. We're working individually as a district to put that together for next year. This contract will start August 1st, so this person will come on board August 1st. Um, We'll probably have this person housed at the high school because it's our largest building and that's where we actually have space, but they will be everywhere in the district depending upon where we need them and where um, there's issues going on throughout the district. So um, they'll also be at sporting events and a lot of other things that we do throughout the district. Um, it's a 40 hour a week position, so we'll have to be flexible in terms of what we do if we have this person work in the evenings or other events. Um, they'll work our traditional calendar, but they also get vacation time and leave time and such, um, just like any other employee. So um, we're very excited about the opportunity. We've had a great partnership with Reading Township Police. They've supported us throughout the years with this position. Um, it's not a full-time position. It's always been a shared position where that person works the road and also works um, our district. So this person will actually be in our district 100%. There is a provision that does say that if there's an emergency, like an MSU situation or somewhere where they need that officer, um, they do have the right to assign them for a period of time to take on um, some type of emergency that's going on in the township. We Hopefully we will not have that in the future, um, but I just wanted to point that out. <clears throat> the township has actually um, passed this agreement um, at their last meeting. So we're just presenting this for any questions. We would uh, put this on the agenda for approval 
uh, at the next board meeting with the intent of the contract starting August 1st uh, of this summer. So um, I wanted to give the board any opportunities for questions. We did talk about this in committee um, this past week. So um, it's taken a very few months. Thanks to Troon and to Meridian Township's um, attorneys for, for putting this together. This is really a boilerplate agreement that Troon put together for a lot of districts in the state that are all having school resource officers. So it's pretty boilerplate, but it also does um, have a lot of the Meridian Township pieces in it in terms of contractually what they have because they're actually their employees. So um, I'd be happy to answer any questions if anybody had specific about the contract or just about what our plans are for that position moving forward. So I've got one question. Um, they're an employee of Meridian Township. They work for the, the district. My question is in regards to vacation schedules. Um, so like public school calendars never line up with my work calendar. Um, so will this person be expected to be like in the building during like when school's in session? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. So they're a 40 hour a week person, they get vacation time. Mm -hmm. We will work with them to schedule. They okay. actually schedule their vacations with Marine Township other officers. Okay. But we've I've talked to the chief and we do have a lot of flexibility in terms of how we schedule this individual and having them at night events or at football games. There may be occasions where we have to pay a premium if we have them more than the 40 hours, 40 hours. If, if something happens, but that's not unlike what we do now because we contract mm -hmm. officers to do night events and things where, sure. um, where they're available when okay. needed, so. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, just a comment, thank you for that question because that's, I was gonna have that, a similar question, but just a comment, obviously thank you to the administration for, for this work, but also always want to thank Meridian Township Police um, they have consistently been a tremendous partner with us um, along the way, so I appreciate their willingness to work on this as well, but obviously thank you to the administration for making this happen as well. I just had one question too about um, the contract. It will be renewed every August and the reciprocal grant is three, grant year is three years, three years. So, so the, okay. the, so the, um, the salary will change. It's not to exceed a certain amount. So depending upon who the officer was, we're assuming it's gonna be Colby for the three years, but we don't know that. So there's not an amount in there, but we'll put that in based on what the actual cost is. It's around $100,000. We have $110,000 in the budget, so there is a little wiggle room in terms of um, potentially increases and things like that, increased costs for benefits and such. So uh, we feel pretty confident that the 110 will cover us for three years. Steve, I know you're still working out some of the details, but have you discussed or what do you anticipate the role of this school resource officer in things like our crisis training and some of those other issues around security and safety? What do you see their role as for the district? So as I mentioned, they were going to be housed at the mm -hmm. high school. So I would envision that they would partner with us and be like Ed Besson and is our, kind of our lead mm -hmm. person right now who does some of that training mm -hmm. that he will, um, Colby will do some of that training or that he will go through the training that Ed did um, in terms of some of those safety management pieces, but he'll kind of be our direct person doing some of those trainings. He'll be, you know, at a lot of events. A lot of it's just exposure um, in terms of being with our kids and being at certain events, whether it's football games or the dare events or just you know being around. He's he's very visible. He spent a lot of times in the building. It's really been yeah. uh, a positive thing. He's a Hazlitt graduate and so um, lives in the community. So he's um, he's very committed, and I think that's really a part that makes this work is having someone who's very committed um, as are all of our employees that has the schools, even though he's not technically our employee, so. I, I think school resource officers are becoming more common in districts. When it comes to professional development, I know in here there's some arrangement for that, but do you know, like to, I wanna make sure that our SRO is, has the right professional development. Are those opportunities through the policing like the police community or is there an SRO like national group so he will he will still have to have all the requirements of a regular Marine Township officer so as far as police firearms training all of the training that they do as a Marine Township officer he will continue to do we will do additional training that that relates to school safety and certain things that so um, like county when we get together as a county and we do some discussions on training within our county for schools he would be involved in that piece so all of his stuff through the police and then he would be involved in the things that we do here within our district and help us lead some of those discussions um, for some of the things that you know he would be qualified to train 
or to teach some of our staff. Would he also, it, it does, I, I'm thinking some of the mental health training that we've done as a district or some of the DEI training, would he <clears> also <throat> be a part of yes, that? Yes, yes, um, that's our intent. And there again, we're just gonna have to kind of feel out his schedule to figure out come how much of that we can incorporate um, in the first year, but that is our intent is he will be involved in most of the kind of trainings that we do as an administrative piece and also as our district as a staff, so. Great, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? I do also want to thank Meridian Township Police uh, um, uh, Supervisor uh, at Meridian Township. Is just Frank Walsh has done a great job at helping uh, put a lot of these things together. Also, Chief Palaga in his role as uh, Chief of Police. It's just it's been a great partnership, and I know we say that a lot, but you know, school safety is is a really big issue for us, and it's really nice to have a partner who really supports us um, in our community. So, thanks to Meridian Township and all their support. Yes. So. Thank you. And I will just note that all five of these discussion items on our agenda will all be part of um, our consent agenda for us to take action on at our next meeting um, in two weeks. So um, we will, they're not part of tonight's consent agenda. I just want to make sure everybody knows we'll take action then. Okay. That's it. That's it. Thank you. So the next item on our agenda is correspondence. Secretary Wheeler. No correspondence. Just uh, newsletters from each of the buildings for the last time this school year. <laughs> yes. Um, the next item on our agenda is comments from the public. Uh, any member of the public is invited to come up to the podium and speak. We just ask that all comments are addressed to the board and that you introduce yourselves. And there is a five minute time limit on any public comments. So we will open the microphone. Good evening, Jeff Kessner, has a resident. Uh, the University of Michigan will spend more than $18 million this academic year on salary and benefits for DEI staff, according to Mark Perry, who's an econ economics professor at U of M. $18 million amounts to the cost of in-state tuition for 1,100 students, but instead will be paid out to 142 DEI staff. Professor Perry says, quote, colleges are spending way too much money on DEI it's wasteful because advancing the DEI religion contradicts the core mission of a university, which is to educate students, teach critical thinking and intellectual diversity instead of pursuing the misguided goals of social justice, end quote. We have a great example on DEI wasteful spending from Michigan State University as they released their inclusive language guide designed around correct DEI vocabulary. Avoid using the terms biological female or biological man. These terms are inaccurate and offensive. Instead, use assigned male or female at birth. BC used to mean before Christ, but now you should be, use BCE, which means before the common area, as you should avoid any terms related to Christianity. Black leader, avoid this term as it implies that one person speaks for all black people. Instead, state the organization he or she belongs to, such as Black Lives Matter. Does bunny, Christmas, Christmas tree, wreath, Easter eggs, reindeer offend you? They should, because according to MSU, all references to majority religious imagery and language should be avoided. Referring to classmates as freshmen is a no-no. Instead, you should use first year to avoid male-centric language. Avoid the word terrorist because it's a judgmental label. You wouldn't want to offend a terrorist. American Indian and Native American are no longer culturally acceptable. But that can't be right because you can apply for a Native American scholarship at the college and engage in American Indian and indigenous studies. I guess you just can't say the words when applying for the scholarship or wanting to join the class. It's not a good idea to use the word emeritus, replace it with emeritum. But that can't be right either because the university uses emeritus 10,000 times on its website if you do a search including reference to professors. Be aware that the terms obese and overweight are stigmas in the size diversity community Instead, use higher weight or larger bodied. Referring to the United States as America is offensive. It's American-centric and first world language now. The terms from MSU's DEI inclusive language guide is a small, 
part of a very, very long list. A list that, in my view, is designed to influence how people speak and what they should think. This is not how I want my tax dollars spent, whether it be at the university or local school level. I repeat the words of Professor Perry, quote, the DEI religion contradicts the core mission of a university, and I will add, has at schools, to educate students, teach critical thinking and intellectual diversity instead of pursuing social justice, end quote. I'm an MSU alum. I love being a Spartan. I've lived in Hazlitt for many years, and I love this community. However, if MSU and Hazlitt schools are going to view everything through the lens of inclusion, why don't they address the fact that Spartans and Vikings were oppressive, violent, and yes, slave owners? The Spartans and Vikings running their institutions of learning are just fine associating themselves with slave owners while students, parents, and faculty get lectures about wrong thought. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak this evening? Okay. Thank you very much. So the next item is board reports, finance and facilities, treasurer comments. Yes, we did meet. Um, we spent a lot of time going over the district goals um, and the progress that was made throughout the year and how the goals for next year will be developed for the administrators um, working together as a team during their retreat. We also got the budget update and went over that. Um, we got all of our documents for the superintendent evaluation that we'll be doing this evening. Um, we went over our state aid note. Um, and we talked about the traffic study that's been brought up quite a bit. So we had some more conversation about that and what Ingham County, and that will be further discussion about that. Um, and then we also talked about um, inviting a student representative to attend the Hazlitt Board of Education meetings and trying to figure out a process of how to choose that student and everything for the, to be in place by the next school year, hopefully. Okay. Any questions for Treasurer Collins? So the next would be update on policy and personnel committee meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, we had a similar agenda. First, we heard from Director Jensen uh, about the budget uh, amendment and the proposed budget for the coming fiscal year. Uh, we then heard from uh, Superintendent Cook and Associate Superintendent Limbert on the uh, district goals and then uh, had the documents uh, um, needed to conduct the evaluation for this evening for Superintendent Cook. And we also talked uh, about the school resource officer contract uh, that we talked about earlier this evening. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Any updates for diversity, equity, inclusion? I don't have anything specifically, although um, because of the comment um, about the student representative, I did talk to uh, Ms. Livingston last week about the idea of having one of our student reps from my committee for next year to potentially fill that role and how that might look. So we're starting discussions of potentially having at least to start to have one of those reps to come and then decide how we want to structure that for the future. So we're starting the ball rolling on that. So thank you for that input. I think it's a great idea. And, uh, and that's it. I just want to make sure. So the, um, the students that were on your committee that did not graduate, so those who were freshmen, sophomores, and juniors last year, are planning to continue into this next Correct. year, and then you'll recruit freshmen to be part of the committee in, early in the school year? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Any other questions? Right. Then items from board members. So um, on June 5th, I attended the 2023 Ingham ISD Board of Education biannual election. There were eight districts represented. Um, unanimous, unanimously, we voted um, for Lori Zajak and John Wallenberg, who will both represent um, the, um, the board for the next six years. Thank you. Good experience to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was very nice to meet other people in different districts, yeah. Wonderful. It was really nice. And then also, um, I just wanted to say I was able to attend the Mackinac trip um, with my fifth grade student. And um, I think it's a wonderful experience that our children get to um, see the bridge, go to Mackinac Island. Some kids had never seen that before. So I think it was a well-planned out trip, very um, thoughtful, a lot of detail, and it went off really well. So I was just really impressed by the way everything ran. Wonderful. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a long day. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very long day. Um, I have a couple things. Um, I had a conversation last week from, um, with Nick from Manor K 
Kesterison. I can never say that. That's our accounting firm. Um, and as the treasurer, we have to speak certain times throughout the year and we talk about the budget. Um, not the budget, I'm sorry, the audit, <coughs> um, because we are audited. Um, and so we went through that and it, he explained the preliminary audit and the certain things that he was looking at, our sinking fund, our internal controls, the ESSER payments and the payroll. Um, and we're gonna speak again in July and then we will speak again and get the full audit in October. He'll be bringing it to the board in October. Um, and we've spent a lot of time talking about this GASB 96 and the new accounting. <laughs> I learned a lot about accounting. Um, <laughs> and um, how that all of that worked as well. So just to make sure that you all know that he is in contact with us as well. Um, and just to mention how wonderful, I thought graduation was just beautiful. Um, and I went, attended Cabaret. There's been so much going on. Mm -hmm. I was t trying to write a list of everything. We went to Cabaret and that was wonderful, the choirs. And then um, my, my eighth grader went to Cedar Point. I did not attend that trip, but she had a blast. Mm -hmm. So it was also well organized and always a great trip for them. So. Congratulations to everybody on the end of the school year. Any other? I would say I know there was a bunch. I, like Tracy, I could. I was trying to like keep track of all the things that were going on, and I, just thank you to all the parents who have been involved in these year-end activities. All of our staff. It was so much fun to go to so many of these activities and just see the celebration of our students and of school and those relationships. And it was. It's just been. Um, this very positive atmosphere, which has been a really fun thing to watch and to enjoy, um, including and probably topped off by graduation. It was just a really great event. And um, I want to thank particularly our administrators as we talk about kind of communications and those relationships. I know several of them, not only in their year end newsletters, but like we already got choir dates for the next year. And I just appreciate our teachers and our administrators knowing that families are thinking of all those things over the summer and how do they stay in touch and make sure that parents are ready for the fall and are excited about it. So um, thank you everybody for a great wrap up to the year and we hope you enjoy the summer, but also appreciate that kind of ongoing. And I also wanted to thank the Hazlitt Middle School staff for their um, color send off. Um, I think there's several of us that were there at that. Um, if anyone gets a chance, I think it's a relatively new tradition that we're starting. Hopefully we'll continue it. But it was, it was so exciting to see the middle schoolers run from the middle school to the high school and to see their expressions and um, all the color in the air and on them. Um, it was a great way to celebrate their year and their accomplishments. All right. Yeah. OK. If there are no other items from board members, um, I will go through the consent agenda. Um, so we have eight items. And I will actually quickly list the policies, too, since that was one of the things that we are approving tonight. But I will not go into as much detail as Vice President Bird has the last few meetings. So the first item on our consent agenda is approval of the minutes from our May 22nd, 2023 regular board meeting. Second is approval of the minutes from the June 6th, 2023 Finance and Facilities Committee meeting. Third is the approval of the minutes from the June 7th, 2023 Policy and Personnel Committee meeting. Fourth, approval of the middle school associate principal recommendation made this evening for Mrs. Weaver. Fifth is approval of the revised NEOLA policies, um, and that included policy 2623 on student assessment, policy 6325 on procurement, policy 8390, animals on district policy, property, policy 8400, school safety information. Then there were a series of seven technology policies, including policies 7540.02, 03, and 04, policy 8300, policy 8305, policy 8315 and policy 9700.01. And then there were six tobacco policies, policy 1615, 3215, 4215, 5512, 7434, and 9160. The sixth item on our consent agenda is um, the Michigan Association of School Boards membership, MASB Legal Trust Fund, which uh, we renew for each school year. Uh, item number seven is the Michigan High School Athletic Association membership, again, approved on an annual basis. And then the final item is the 2023 summer tax certification. So does anybody need any items pulled? And if not, would somebody like to move that we approve the consent agenda? I move to approve it. Okay. Consent agenda. Second? I'll second. Thank you. Any further discussion about any of those items? 
I will say thank you to Vice President Byrd, to Associate <laughs> Superintendent Lindbert for all their work on the policies. I know it was a lot this time, and I appreciate it. I was thinking about jokingly pulling <laughs> just to make you read it again. Not going to do it. Yep. Yeah. I appreciate I that. that thank you. All right. If there's no further discussion, all in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Um, so we have just one announcement this evening, which is our next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting will be held on June 26, 2023 at 7 p.m. here in the boardroom of the administration building. Um, and so next, at the request of Superintendent Cook, the board will vote to go into closed session for the purpose of conducting his 2022-23 year-end evaluation pursuant to Section 8A of the Open Meetings Act. So I need a motion to go into closed session in a second. I motion to go into closed session. Okay, thank you. I'll second. Thank you. And then, Michelle, you need to do a roll call vote, correct? Mrs. Clark? Here? Same. Present? Same. 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 We have to do a roll call vote yes. to go into closed <laughs> session. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mrs. Collins? Yes. Mrs. Palmarento? Yes. Mr. Byrd? Yes. And Mrs. Wheeler? Yes. Thank you. We are in closed session.